Welcome to PVM Lore, the series where we dive deep into the stories behind our favorite content to discover why ourselves as players are struggling against these mighty foes, as well as what these encounters mean to the story of RuneScape as a whole. Today we will be tackling Old School's third raid, the Tombs of a Mascot. Long before our players walked the land of Gilinor, the gods Tumakin and Elidnus, who presided over the lands of the Caridian Desert, created two demigods, Ichthalrin and Amaskit, to watch over their lands as well as manage the cycle of life and death of their people. Amaskit, the goddess of rebirth, was responsible for the resurrection and reincarnation of creatures within the desert, helping souls find their way into their next lives. During the Second Age, a war between the gods broke out and Amaskit found herself overwhelmed as the surrounding death and destruction began to take its toll on the young demigod. Driven to the brink, she would dub herself the Devourer and begin to absorb the souls she was supposed to be helping in a plea for more power. At the tail end of the war, Tumakin would have to sacrifice himself in order to drive the opposing forces back. He would bestow much of his legacy to the last pharaoh he had personally selected, Osmumpton. Osmumpton would be tasked to safeguard the massively powerful weapons and tools of the late god, and at the time of his death, a tomb would be constructed in his name to bury these relics for ages to come. During the Fourth Age, our character's time on this world, a mascot, the Devourer, would begin to make moves to find the weapons and search for the powerful souls to strengthen herself in order to pursue her true godhood. She had already mind-controlled the current pharaoh of Menaphos and enacted a quarantine of the city to keep her schemes under wraps. She would begin to take workers to the Jaltevas Pyramid, the site of Osmumpton's tomb, and begin excavating the area. Finding a sealed door deep within the tomb, she learned she needed the power of all of Tumigan's avatars in order to delve deeper. She began to plot on how to capture the four remaining avatars of the Menophyte Pantheon, and for each she would conceive a trap to be their undoing. She went to the monkey, Baba, a strong den mother who was unhappy with the way her scion was leading the tribe, and promised her the ability to rule her tribe forever into prosperity. This would be twisted, as a mask had killed all of the monkeys in the desert, and would raise them as undead thralls, led by the now cursed Baba, to do her bidding. With this undead army, she would siege and capture Abmekin, the avatar of companionship. She would then find the Don Scarab Kefri, who longed for children which would be more intelligent than her to move the bloodline further. Amaskit promised her this in return for her service, and in doing so, Amaskit gave her her children. Although they were no smarter than the common locus, and in order to fulfill her bargain, Amaskit would wipe Kefri's mind. As her consciousness began to fade away, she called out to the avatar Scarabus, who came to her aid and was quickly overwhelmed and captured as well. Amaskit would then seek the mortal Akka, a warrior who had joined one of the Devourer's waning cults, the Children of Rebirth, who in a ritual to call the Goddess of Rebirth back to the desert committed mass suicide in order to be reborn in their perfect form. However, with the Goddess of Rebirth long gone, their souls were promptly devoured by a mascot. She found a sole survivor in Akka, whose poison had failed to end his life, and promptly sealed him in a sarcophagus and made him into her soldier. Walking the line between life and death, Akka would battle with Het, the Avatar of Health, capturing him in a mascot's name. Lastly, a mascot would go to the crocodile Zebek, who already had grievances with his Avatar Krondis, who wanted the creatures of the desert to be resourceful and not wanting them to live in excess. The croc wanted to never be hungry, and a mascot agreed to give him this with exchange for his services. Once Krondus was captured by a mascot in Zebek, she would curse Zebek, and all that he would eat would turn to ash and dust. She would also give him eternal life, dooming him to a life of torment and starvation. 
Once she had captured all four of the avatars, she would force them to open the lower level of Osmumpton's tomb and give her access to the secrets within. The player would begin their raid on the tomb, freeing the four avatars in order to also be allowed access into this lower level. Inside this core of the pyramid, a masked would find the weapons Tumakin had wanted Usmumpton to protect. The wardens of both Tumakin and Elidnus were golems created with the essences of the two gods, whose purpose was to fight in the god wars of the Second Age and possess the power to transfer divine essence between beings. With this, a masked found what she was looking for and now possessed the same power. Having what she needed, she would activate the Wardens to dispose of our player characters and promptly leave the tomb. After triumphing over the Wardens, the Ghost of Osmumpton will reward the player with loot buried with him in his burial chamber. He will also tell us that while we have lessened the power of a Masket over this area, she will make her return soon and we will have to stop her for good. Many powerful items are found within this tomb, each pertaining to the history of the desert and the powerful beings that created them. The Ward of Elidnus, a powerful shield wielded by the goddess herself, was given to Osmumpton before his death, after she fled from her people to mourn the corruption of her daughter Amaskat. The Masori Armor Set, the ancient armor of Osmumpton's fiercest soldiers. These warriors were the front line in the war against Zeros during the Second Age. Osmumpton's Fang, the pharaoh's personal weapon. It is said that the late pharaoh would travel far and wide to hunt the strongest beasts of the world with this blade. And the Tumakin's Shadow, created by the god himself and used to create the Wardens as a conduit for both Tumakin and Elidnus's divine essence. As an aside, there is still one large mystery we cannot solve or at least explain regarding the tombs. In our battle with the enraged wardens, a phantom appears behind the boss in the last phase of the fight. It looks to be sucking up the entirety of the room, tearing the tiles off the floor and restricting our movements. And once we drop the boss to zero, we see it get sucked up by this phantom as well. Is this some sort of security from the late Tumakin to prevent the wardens from falling into the wrong hands? Or is it some other entity entirely? It appears to have a face resembling the Scarabites, but no information is given on its identity or purpose. Oh well, I guess we may never know. The tombs of Amasket set the stage for the future endeavors of the demigod Amasket, as well as established the ancient history of the Caridian Desert as a region. Who knows where she might appear next? She still has the city of Menaphos under her control, and now holds the divide energy stored within the Wardens. Only time will tell where this story will go next. <laughs>